Everybody and welcome to Raw Recovery, a Trudging Together podcast. My name is Dion Miller. We are live and in studio today for the first time. Um, first, I would like to welcome my co-host today and probably a permanent host, mm-hmm. Stacy K. Welcome, Stacy. It's good to see you. Hi, good to see you. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of talking this last week, and we're like. You know what? <laughs> we need to sit down and, and you know, because we were, we were just talking. I'm like, these are podcasts. We just need to start doing this and, and do it live. So we decided today that we were going to talk about uh, searching for your higher power. Yes. Um, which, um, you know, I thought uh, at first thought I'm like, that's a great topic. But then it came a little bit challenging, which I can appreciate. Um, because when things are challenging, we tend to look into it a little bit more. Uh, we, you know, and then we look at ourselves too. So it's always a growing experience whenever we do things like this. So um, I'd like to start off by saying that number one, this is a recovery podcast. Number two, we do not speak for any 12 step group. Okay, we might be a part of those but we will not be speaking on behalf of those. So I just want everybody to know, we do not speak on behalf of AA, Smart Recovery, NA, or or anybody else. This is just our experience, strength, and hope. And uh, yeah, we'll try to have fun with it. Uh, again, if you have different experiences or you have an experience you'd like to share, please feel free to post it and we will talk about it, okay? Um, I, do, I would like everybody to interact if you want to. There again, there's that level of anonymity that we tend to keep. So uh, uh, there's my mom. All right, that's her code word. That's her. That's actually her number of years of sobriety. All right. Good for her. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's awesome. do a little let's do a little bragging on on mom. You know, that way I can get myself a nice Christmas present. <laughs> I know how to work this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so. Finding your higher power, that can be daunting. It can be, it can be kind of tough to do. My experience with a higher power, I, um, it wasn't too tough for me to find my higher power. I didn't, my parents didn't really push religion on us. So I didn't really have a concept going in or anything like that. What was your experience with that when you were younger with religion? Um, mine? Yeah. It was actually, I had a moment when I was a child, um, God, I mean, wasn't, it wasn't, my mom would drop me off at church every now and then, but it wasn't a huge topic in our household. Um, but I had a spiritual experience in my backyard. Um, and I don't know what I was doing. I was, I was playing, I was just a little kid. And of course we're, you know, pure back then. And, uh, I looked up at the sun and I opened my arms and I felt this presence that was, and I don't advise looking directly at the sun, but I did. Um, <laughs> it did hurt my eyes. Um, but yeah. And I remember, I remember this, this warm feeling coming over me and it was, wow. um, yeah. And that was, um, I remember going to Bible study. I rem- you know, my mom was really good about taking us to the, those week Bible studies where they had the little fun times and stuff like that. But sure, God never really stuck with me or it wasn't something that I, I carried on as a child. Um, yeah. Yeah. I kind of feel like I was given the basics. Mm-hmm. Um, I certainly understood. Uh, but when it came to it, I mean, my relation, I didn't have much of a relationship with God. And I'm I'm kind of one of those people that's grateful that they're an alcoholic because I don't know that I would have found God any other way. And it's such a big part of my life now that it makes me grateful to be an alcoholic in a sense. I feel as though that um, that spiritual experience was the um, pathway to my life. I think that, okay. um, you know, I... 
I'm a great, you know, I'm grateful now. Um, but I never would have turned to God. I don't think if I had the life that I had and it was a hard life. Um, and today I, you know, I've, I believe in a power greater than myself. God is a huge part of my life. And I am, Mm -hmm. you know, that's, I live for that. I live for God. Um, but yeah. And I, you know, maybe that was that spiritual awakening that said, you know, that's it, but I'm, I'm grateful for everything. Yeah. It's that, that sometimes it just takes the smallest amount of effort yes. and you can feel it. So, mm-hmm. all right, let's, let's move on to a question here. What is a higher power? Well, for maybe there's people out there that don't understand what a higher power is and why we utilize something called a higher power. It is because sometimes people don't like the word God. Yes. And, and so we're kind of separating it from a, religion spirituality type of thing because uh the 12 step programs are not religious they are spiritual in nature now the people in those groups might be religious they may go to church and more power to them you know we should be quick to see where religious people are right but we need to understand that what we're talking about isn't necessarily a condemning the earth is going to end watch your sins um you know uh, my higher power has never once tested my sobriety. He, do, he doesn't do that stuff with me. No. Um, and a higher power is a guide. Um, I think we could probably even talk about loneliness before we talk about a higher power. You know, that loneliness that all of us feel before coming into the program. Um, you know, and we all feel it. So when we come in here and we find that we're not terminally unique, and um we're seeing other people that are grasping uh something and we and we see them doing it and we want a part of it you know because we want that loneliness to disappear where what are your thoughts on what a higher power is you know i think that what i appreciated about the program the most was that i got to you know it was my own concept because i Mm -hmm. coming from where we come from whether it's the streets drugs alcohol i don't know that we're you know hanging out with a higher power the whole time and and praying and everything else. Um, I feel as though, um, you know, getting that, that freedom to, to start a relationship with a higher power slowly because recovery is overwhelming as it is like, Mm -hmm. please, I have to quit drinking drugs and all this stuff. No. And I was, you know, there was something that I heard that was really, really um, like this aha moment. And it was like, thank God that it's, you know, came to believe like we get time to to build that relationship exactly i came to believe you know um and that is that is that opens the door to start that relationship with that higher power yeah and um you know what a higher power meant to me and it's very hard was that you know i you know i've talked to a lot of people in recovery and it was like prayer was definitely not a part of their life you know um and so that came to believe, uh, it, you know, people said it could be a doorknob. It can be whatever you want to believe in as long as we start believing in something greater than ourselves. Because yep. a life run on self-will mm-hmm. put me, you know, that's when right. I start drinking. Yeah. That's when I start drugging. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that's what a, a higher power means to me. Something that I can absolutely surrender my life to on a daily basis and let him lead my life or her. Mm-hmm. Uh, Whomever you choose, um, yeah. whatever that looks like. Yeah. Um, and there were, um, I apologize. I got to put, I had to put my phone on mute because I was getting a phone call. Sure. Um, you know, and a part of, of looking for that is it's free. And I'd actually like to read at this point, I'd like to read from Bill's story just real quick on yeah. uh, page 12. And this is when Ebby came in and was talking, was talking to Bill about it. Uh, Despite the living example of my friend, there remained in me the vestiges of my old prejudice. The word God still aroused a certain antipathy. When the thought was expressed that there might be a God personal to me, this feeling was intensified. I didn't like the idea. I could go for such conceptions as creative intelligence, universal mind, spirit, and nature, but I resisted the thought of a Caesar of the heavens, however loving his sway might be. I've since talked to scores of men who felt the same way. 
My friend suggested what then seemed a novel idea. Why don't you choose your own conception of God? Mm. And what I really like about that is we're given choices. Yes. We're, you know, and and when we're given actual choices in the program and we make that choice, it intensifies. And that's what he's talking about, that you feel closer. You feel closer to your maker because you've made that decision. And, and now now that's a beginning. And they talk about that um, a lot in step two. Yep. You know? um, total dependence on a, the only way to total independence is total dependence on a power greater than yourself. That's what they say. You know, um, I think that the the coolest part about step two is, is um, you know, sponsoring is we don't know. Everybody came from different places and we don't yeah. know what happened or what gave them biases towards a higher power. So, yeah. you know, breaking through the ice of of what biases do you have? You know, whether it was religious, um, you know, religion that that you know, or an experience that we've had at church that, sure. that turned us away, human, human error that could have turned us away from, from something greater than ourselves. Right. Yeah. And yes. I think that, that, you know, working step two is, is getting through those biases. So it's not a slippery slope anymore mm -hmm. that, you know, it, you know, it puts that sunlight of the spirit on there so we can, um, so we can step into that sunlight so we can start believing in something. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, and even though I didn't have much of a religious upbringing, I did have, I had my own biases. Yeah. Sure. You mm -hmm. know, and I took those straight. You know, what I did is I just, you know, if you want to go look at something and find something wrong with it, you're going to find it. You are, right. you just are. So I had to start laying those things aside, just like we were talking about yesterday or earlier yesterday. Um, and then of course it just left my mind. My mind's in a lot of different places. Uh, I apologize. Yeah. Um, yeah, that just, it just slipped anyway. <laughs> hey, that's why we do this live. They got it. They got, you guys got to see this stuff. So there are certain steps that we need to take before you can have a higher power in your life. There are right. things that you need to do. Number one, you need to quit playing God. Yes. You know? So what are some of the different ways we would play? Well, gosh, you know, if I wanted my alcohol, I wasn't above throwing myself on the floor like a no. little three-year-old. No. Nah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I've thrown uh, some things. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Our emotional, uh, when you quit playing God, your emotional sobriety also starts getting better. Because you are no longer directing the show. You are no longer, isn't it frustrating when you know it's perfect and if they would just do it and listen, it'd be fine. But even if it turned out perfect, I'd find something wrong with it. It'd still be wrong. Well, Playing it, God in my realm was self-will. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to force this to happen. If I want it, I'm going to get it, Right. Yeah. Um, and I didn't have anything between me and that drink. I didn't have anything between me and that drug. Yeah. So, you know, the stop, pause and pray, you know, um, anything, whether it's the people like uh, this, the people in the meeting as our higher power, where you go to a meeting and, and, you know, whatever you hear stops you from taking that drink. Right. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Those are yeah. the things that need to be between me and that drink, me and that drug. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, because when it comes down to it, um, I have willpower for a lot of things. But when it comes to alcohol, all bets are off. All bet. Well, and, and soda and cigarettes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Good to have everybody here. Welcome, everybody. Um, but yeah, I would manipulate anybody, anything. I remember at the towards the end of my drinking, when I would date, when I was dating, um, I would meet somebody new and I would tell them, I know that I have a drinking problem. If you try and change me, I'm going to dump you. Yeah. <laughs> and I did. I would too. You try and interfere with my drinking. There wasn't any person around that could, you know, interfere with it. Well, it turned out that there was, and now I'm married to her, but 
<laughs> uh, between that and, and my mom, too. I mean, they were a great help. So, um, hey, Gary, good to see you, Scott. Good to see you. Hi. Scott Hi. Leisure's in the room. All right. The next thing you're going to need to do before you find a firepower, you need to stop fighting. Yes. It, this one was hard for me. This one was really hard. Um, I had so much anger. I was so angry at everybody and everything that it took me a long time, years, to stop fighting. It really, but, well, I also have PTSD, and that doesn't help. But that's still my own problem. And it's something that I needed to deal with. Okay. I had to accept the fact that my emotions are my own. And um, that when I'm fighting, what happened? It's like fighting stigma. You can't fight stigma. You know, we grew up with Bugs Bunny where he said, fight fire with fire. He was wrong. <laughs> you yeah. can't do that. So, Stopping fighting doesn't mean that you don't advocate for yourself, but it also it does also mean that we need to stop creating problems in our life. Drama. Yeah. Stop fighting. Surrender. Right. I think that was my biggest question. It's surrender. Do I always have to be right? You know, um, do I have to prove that this person is wrong? Like and and do those things. Um, but I think that the biggest question that I had was surrender. How do I surrender yeah. these things? And as soon as it was, we stop, you know, we cease fighting anything or everyone. Well, mm -hmm. I, I started minding my own business, you know, <laughs> uh, that was hard. You know, I, I wanted to it engage is. in the drama gossip, all yeah. those things. Well, I was um, used to it. Yes. That was our normal. Yeah. I thrived on drama. Right. Absolutely. Right. Well, it, the because the, then the drama creates more problems and what a great reason to drink yep yeah so we make these i found that a lot of my my uh a lot of my problems weren't even there they were made up when i got sober they just didn't right. exist all these people hating me it just wasn't happening and i would i would convince myself of otherwise here comes here comes a, a big one and i like this one the next step is going to be acceptance and awareness. Um, we utilize acceptance in the first step. Okay. But now we're going to use acceptance as a different form. It's going to, so acceptance is the key. Okay. But acceptance is the key to willingness. So, and willingness is what we need in order to start bringing that higher power around. Um, I like this yes. one. Go ahead. Yeah, overthinking creates problems that aren't there, Scott. <laughs> yep. That's a huge one. It is. Yeah. And I think, and I think if uh, we ask everybody that does that to raise their hand, um, we probably get a lot of hands. You know? Oh so, yeah. I mean, that's planning out my life. Like instead of having any sort of faith, I'm planning out like I, when I'm driving and I'm not on the road and I'm in my mind and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm planning this whole thing out and I'm not, I'm not giving my higher power room for anything. And I'm not, right. in, I'm not present. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing because I'm so busy planning everything around me. Yeah. Right. And this is this is how it has to be. And that's my overthinking that creates all of those problems, all yep. the wrong men, all the, you know, drama instead of saying, yeah, I'm going to turn this over to my higher power today. Yeah. We're just staying present on what's happening in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know? And that that comes back to a day at a time. Right. You know? um, I was just in a, I was in a meeting and people are saying, yeah, after 30 days, I that 30 days, I. You know, I relapse, you know, always at 68 days, I relapse. Yeah. And stop counting. Then yep. stop counting. This isn't a, this isn't a quantity program. Quantity. It's a quality right. program. It is not a help. Your, it is not a self-help program. It is a help yourself program. Okay? Yourself. Self-help books don't work unless you know how to help yourself. Right. That's what they're. So I'm going to go to page 45 here. I thought this was a good uh, connection to what we were talking about. 
Uh, lack of power, that was our dilemma. We had to find a power by which we could live, and it had to be a power greater than ourselves, obviously. But where and how were we to find this power? Well, that's exactly what this book is about. Its main object is to enable you to find a power greater than yourself, which will solve your problem. That means we have written a book which we believe to be spiritual as well as moral. And it means, of course, that we are going to talk about God. Here, difficulty arises with agnostics. Many times we talk to a new man and we watch his hope rise as we discuss the alcoholic problem and explain our fellowship. But his face falls when we speak of spiritual matters, especially when we mention God. For we have really reopened a subject which our man thought he had neatly evaded or entirely ignored. I'm just going to read the next line. We know how he feels. Yeah, we do know how they feel. And that's the difference. That's the difference. Um, for, me, real, for, for me, real quick, um, I was a chronic relapser. And I had gone in and out of the rooms in 22 times in two years. And finally, a man approached me, Paul. You probably know Paul. Paul A. Can't give his last name. He approached me and he said, Dion, you know what your problem is? I said, no, I don't. <laughs> and he said, you don't have God in your life. I'm yeah. going to introduce you to God. And that's what happened to me. A man came up and said, Dion, enough. Enough is enough. You don't have God in your life. And I'm glad somebody did that because I wasn't here in the part when we were reading where it says if you're if you're willing to sponsor, because that was new to me. It used to be if you're looking for a sponsor and that confused me in the beginning. Of course, that's also a good way for me to prove my point because I'm like that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so that was the beginning for me. And what he did, he said, Dion, this is God. God, this is Dion. And then he left us alone. That was it. And then it was going to be my, it was going to be between me and God from that point. You know what? Um, I think that that brings up the, um, once you take the drink out of my hand, you know, mm -hmm. that was my solution mm -hmm. to everything. And now I still have the problems. Now I'm just sober. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, that was it. And I was also a chronic relapser. And I did have um, honesty was my problem because I couldn't wrap my brain around the fact of of um, of complete honesty. I didn't know mm -hmm. what that was. I was delusioned. But yeah. uh, I think that the, the clarity that you get from from step two of the, um, you know, and and building that relationship with your higher power, you know, it clears out. It clears out that I like to, it's kind of like the, you know, that debris that, that kept come you know, that we kept drinking and mm -hmm. putting in our bodies. And all of a sudden, you know, we have some clarity and we're able to see better and we're ever, you know, we're able to um, learn tools um, mm -hmm. like the prayers um, that are mentioned in the book or anything that um, whatever works to come between you and that drink and to help you start, um, Taking responsibility. Yeah. Taking yeah. responsibility because that was my, that was also the thing. I didn't want to take responsibility. Yeah. You know? And and God helped me, you know, or my higher power. I do choose to call him God. Um, it helped yeah. me to know that I wasn't alone. I just couldn't see him Yeah. or, or that higher power. So yeah, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's where, you know, where we discover uh, humility in its, in, in, in its actual meaning. Yes. Um, which, no. which is, which is actually the next step. You got to ask for help. That's right. You got, you got to ask God for help. So that means you got to pray. All right. And that doesn't mean that yet. I don't do it. The thou, Oh God, my, I, I don't know. I talk to him like I do everybody else. Um, but when I have that time, it's just between me and him. Okay. Because um, it's a personal relationship. Okay. This is a personal relationship. And it's going to be, for me, it was the first successful relationship that I had. 
-hmm. And then I can base other relationships off of that. And I learn how to love appropriately, which is the big word there, appropriately, right? Um, and I am that kind of person. I love everybody. Um, but your relationship with your higher power is between you because God could be, God is everything to me. So therefore he can supply your needs, even though they're different from mine at the same time, even while we're sitting here talking, he's taking care of both of us and all of our friends over here at the same time. You know, I, the, this personal relationship, I think everybody has their, their own relationship with God and it's absolutely awesome, whatever yep. that is. But I remember human, I would, the envy of humans, you know, the, the, um, I wish I had that, you know, um, I had some guru humans, you know, um, mm -hmm. spiritual leaders that I put my faith into instead of my higher power. Um, and that can lead you the wrong way because sometimes it's the, the, you know, the, the opinions or the, um, the advice of others, you know, mm -hmm. that, um, can get confusing because everybody has a solution. Sure. Right? If I'm willing to listen, but, um, I was grateful and it was lonely at first, but I got to build a very, um, solid relationship with my higher power. And mm -hmm. I put everything into it because after the humiliation yep. of not being able to stay sober and I didn't even have a drinking problem in my brain, yeah. um, I was like, all right, God, you got this. You know, I didn't hesitate to get on my knees because that's mm -hmm. what I was told to do is yeah. get on my knees and, and give it to God, give it to that. And you know, I, I'm thankful that, you know, my higher power didn't take everything at once because yeah. I couldn't have handled that. <laughs> um, but I, you know, but building that, I, I went, you know, when I sponsor, I say, you find where you belong in that realm. Where can you spend one hour alone where mm -hmm. there's not a busy life or busyness around, you know, intruding on that time with your higher power? Because at the end of the day, one, a, a, a friend in my recovery, and it was, it was another, it's so simple, Dion, mm -hmm. you know, um, God does for you what you cannot do for yourself. Uh, yeah. Weird. How simple is that? But I'm mm -hmm. an alcoholic and I like to complicate <laughs> it and I need to write a book about it and everything yep. else. It, it was just that simple. God yeah. does for you what you cannot do for yourself. So okay. that is, um, that is, it's, it's true if you let him. You know, mm -hmm. but it's, it's hard. But so building that, you know, that second step, you get what you put into it. So whatever you, you know, I have my, my sponsors definitely go to whatever church they can go to or sure. whatever they can do, you know, yeah. but I just give him, give that higher power some time, mm -hmm. you know, to, to work in your life because he, you know, your higher power will show up and, and take I don't have the desire to drink today. I don't yep. have the desires to, you know, my, most of my, most of my, <laughs> um, my, my addictions are gone. I don't yep. have that, that fist fighting white knuckling. I have to take a drink. I have to go to that drug. Oh. I have to run to the, you know, convenience store, those things. I can't, I don't have the control. It's gone. I, I gave it, you know, I, I did what I could do. So uh. that you know, that time that you build that personal relationship is a hundred percent important. Yeah. You know, um, hi Robin. Good to see you. Um, I had 12 years of, of sobriety before and, and I think that's one of the reasons that I had a hard time getting back into the program. Um, because I didn't think, you know, God gave me a beautiful life and I took advantage of it. And, you know, I just didn't think he was going to take me back. I was embarrassed, not in the rooms, but with God. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was it was hard for me to get over that hump because my brain kept saying, well, you had 12 years. You know, you know, God. No, I didn't. Not at that point in time. Have I gotten those 12 years back in the in the form of feelings and knowledge? Yes, I have. But I had to work my butt off to get it. I had to work hard. Um, and every day is another day that I get to move closer to God. You no, know? um, God is perfection. So I am moving towards perfection, which is God. 
doesn't mean I'm going to be perfect. So <laughs> there's another part of the big book I'd like to read. We agnostics on page 53. Logic is great stuff. We liked it. We still like it. Mm -hmm. It is not by chance we were given the power to reason, to examine mm -hmm. the evidence of our senses, and to draw conclusions. That is one of man's magnificent, magnificent attributes. We agnostically inclined would feel satisfied with a proposal which does not lend itself to a reasonable mm -hmm. approach and interpretation. Hence, we are at pains to tell you why we think our present faith is reasonable why we think it is more sane and logical to believe than not to believe, why we say our former thinking was soft and mushy when we threw up our hands in doubt and said, we don't know. When we became alcoholics, crushed by self-imposed crisis, we could not postpone or evade. We had to fearlessly face the proposition that God is either every, is everything or else he is nothing. Mm -hmm. God either is or he isn't. What was your choice to be? Now you got to make a choice. And this choice is going to matter. Um, this is where half measures will avail you nothing. Okay? It's a pregnant situation. You're either pregnant or you're not. <laughs> okay? There's no, there's no in between with God. There's no gray area. Yep. So... You're either going to jump on with all the fervor of a dying person, which you are, or you're not, or you're going to play around with it some more. You're going to, you're going to reason with your logic. Logic and knowledge can be, it can get in the way I think of, and thankfully I never had a lot of logic. Um, <laughs> I was born that way. Um, <laughs> But I think that some of those things came to the way books, um, you know, that's, and sometimes it's just as simple as doing that prayer, right? Um, it's, um, and I, I, building, yeah, I don't know. I don't have much I, to say on that. Yeah, it's all right. Here, uh, I believe this is Gary. Before the program, I understood that God is my higher power. But until I started working the steps in OA and CODA, Mm -hmm. I didn't really understand what God wanted me in my life. And it was to stop pleasing everybody and focus on me and my relationships with him, I'm presuming. Amen. So a relationship with God. Um, and that's it. Sometimes that's what it is. Yeah. Guess what, alcoholics? You're probably codependent. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Maybe just a little yeah, I do know what I was going to say. The all or nothing. I remember right. hearing that statement. And, uh, you know, I think that we don't want to let go of everything. Yeah. right? So we're like, I'm going to keep this and I'm going to keep this. <laughs> and then, you know, but thank you, God. I don't have that that, you know, I don't have that obsession, but my mind is still um, isn't right. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's all or nothing. And yeah. that's that's the um he is everything yeah well we got to make a commitment yep. and really this is what we're in the sense of all of it we're talking about humility here this mm -hmm. is about putting your head down because i think the very first honest thing i said in aa was i don't know yeah and to this day i don't know <laughs> i don't i don't want to know <laughs> i do but um all right, well, I just have one other thing that I'd like to cover. Um, of course, we can talk, we can always keep going or whatever. All right, this is what's fantastic about all of this. The promises mark your progress with God. Okay, all the odd steps have promises. Okay, uh, let's turn to the third step promises real quick. I'm going to use that as an example. Um, I had a friend of mine who uh, changed it a little bit, not actually it, um, but instead you read the promises in I, in I sentences, right? So I'm going to read the third step promises, and if you read them this way, you're almost asking yourself questions. And if you're feeling this way and this is happening, then you know your progress. What do we do with progress? We claim it. 
we claim spiritual progress rather than spiritual perfection. perfection. Good job. That's how we claim it. That's it. You don't need to do anything more than that. All right. When I sincerely took such a position, all sorts of remarkable things followed. I had a new employer. Being all powerful, he provided what I needed if I kept close to him and performed his work well. Established on such a footing, I became less and less interested in myself, my little plans and designs. More and more, I became interested in seeing what I could contribute to life. I felt new power flow in. I enjoyed peace of mind. And I discovered I could face life successfully. I became conscious of his presence and I began to lose our, my fear of today, tomorrow, or the hereafter. I was reborn. Mm. And it just, it changes it just enough so you can mark off going, yes, that's happening in my life. And then you know that you're, then, then I don't need to be running around to everybody else. Am I doing good? Am I doing good? Am I doing good? You can ask God. You can ask God. He'll tell you. He'll tell you. Dion. So that is, um, I can recognize right now that that's exactly where I'm at right now. Mm. The little plans, the little designs um, that I have, because somewhere along the lines, I think going into self is an isolation. Because yes. it's easier to, you know, when I have some fear or some, and, and this is where I am in my life right now, I'll be completely okay. honest. Um, self has, uh, when fear sets in, I retreat, you know, I, I retreat into self and then I start designing my life the way that I want it to go. Mm -hmm. And that can get me into trouble as it has. Yes. So um, thank you for the reminder. Um, <laughs> and self is everything I do not want to be in. Selfless, yeah. great. Yeah. So, but it, you know, I have found that, and this is the reason why I say consistent, because this thing forgets pretty easy, mm -hmm. and I need to be reminded sometimes. Like I was working on my swearing, and I was so focused on working on my swearing, I was swearing mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And then my friend came to me and said, "Stop it and give it to God," and it worked. Right? I knew that answer. Okay, but God wanted me to find out through one of his children. Right. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, I knew that. Oh, you could add a V8, right? <laughs> ha, that's so true. It it there is a for I think that life it's it's hard to get to get that solid foundation on these things when you're in the middle of life, right? And yeah, sets in and work and relationships and family and all of that. Um, and then I fail. You know, I feel, and, and I take it, I'm not so hard on myself anymore. I, yeah. you know, you clean up and do what you have to do. Yeah. That's yeah. why it's important to have a sponsor because that sponsor is going to give you encouragement. My sponsor did whenever we ended, he's like, you're doing great. And he point out the things I was doing right. And yeah. that's what I do with my sponsees now because it felt good. Cause I re I respected this person as my sponsor, mm -hmm. you know? So when they told me, Hey, I'm noticing, and it wasn't fake. Hey, your eyes are starting to shine. I'm reading this. It's happening in your life right now. And he would point that out. And that's why it's important that we have that guide because that guide is going to lead you to God. Right. In your own way, in the way that you want to, in the way that you want to approach it and your thoughts. Okay. You get options here. Okay? My first my first higher power was Batman. Hmm. <laughs> I haven't brought that one up in a long time. All right. And it, it wasn't for very long. I was screwing around with the program. No, I had to believe in something. You know. um, I do like to point out that in the 12 by 12, in the 11th step, it does say that even, even the people that call their home groups their higher power, Soon call God by name. Yes. Okay. Group of drunks is great, but only for a little bit. Right? Because they're people. The but they are Fran bigger than you. Yeah. Yep. And that St. Francis prayer is the epitome of what it's right. like to be selfless. But I don't know. There are days I want love. And there are days that, you know, sure. those things. And it's hard for me to say them when I'm in self completely. But you're absolutely right. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with uh, 
asking somebody for a hug or say, I'm feeling a little lonely. Nothing right. wrong with that. Just don't expect anything. If you expect it, then you're going to be let down. Um, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with advocating for yourself. All right. Um, we are hitting about, well, this is about 40 minutes with the 10 minutes that uh, uh, from the beginning. Was there anything else you wanted to touch on? No, I think that there's, you know, spe uh, on the subject of God, um, what was helpful is having that God box or that God bag to, to great learn. point. Yeah. Why don't you, you know what? Not everybody knows what a God box is. Why, why don't you go ahead and fill them in? Well, for women, you can decorate them as pretty as you want and it becomes <laughs> a really bubbly thing or, um, you know, whatever it is in desperation. Um, but I was, I was, you know, you get a bag, you get a box, you decorate it and, you start writing all your problems and you give it to God. And if that's your God for, for that day, you know, you put them in there and you don't do anything with them. And, yeah. you know, I pray, I would pray for, you know, those things to go away. And, and then some days you, especially in the beginning, you go back and after you do those steps and <laughs> how a lot of those problems are gone. Yeah. You look at them, you're like, Oh my God. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but that's when we get to go back and, and it's amusing in a way. Yeah. And we get to chuckle at it because we've made progress. Um, what's great progress. about what's great about God boxes is they teach you let go and let God and delayed gratification. I hate I hate that whole line, but it's true. I work on delayed gratification all the time. Um, yeah, I'm just not feeling it right now. Well, let's give it 10 minutes. You know, something may change in that time. But I always give myself space, a little bit of space in there a little bit of time to think on something just just a little bit longer and i can usually i usually get a different result because of that you know? i think the other thing for you know for it, it's really hard because we come in from hard places to imagine that there is something that could love us that unconditionally so yeah. when i hear that you know i've heard god is love and i'm like yeah you know, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent that I'm convinced because if God isn't going to, if I'm not, if I'm not going to love me, I'm not going to let God love me. Right. Because right. it's really hard to accept love um, because that's not where I came from and, yeah. and let alone. And now, you know, my, my mantra is, is, is to give love, not expect love. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and for my higher power to give me the, to love somebody back to health, to love yeah. somebody to, to sober, you know, and that definitely comes from my higher power. Yeah. You know, um, and that, that, those are some great points on more delayed. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, we could go on the, on uh, a lot of this for quite some time. Um, you know, the, I think what it comes down to it, you know, for me, because I don't think God's entirely love either. He's everything, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I'm a person with varied emotions. And so he can be those things. When I'm feeling down, God's there for me. He comforts me. He doesn't solve my problem. He'll give me the answers to solve my problems. Right? He'll give, he will definitely do that. But I've got to solve my problems on my on my own or with a guide that's connected to God. So Stacy, this was a lot of fun. You're awesome. <laughs> this was a lot of fun. Um, Kitty, get down before I hurt you. Um, yeah. So we will definitely be doing this again. Thank you everybody for being here. It was new for me too. I haven't done a podcast live yet. So, um, you know, for all my uh, rewatchers, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, everybody that was here, we had a lot of people here today. It'd be hard for me to get through them all. Mom was here. Gary was here. I I don't want to miss out on such. Now I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. Ingrid was here. My mommy was here. Um, Scott Leisure. Scott was Scott Leisure was here. Robin was here. Gary was here. Um, Jim B was here. All right. And of course, you and me. So thank you everybody for being here. Thanks, um, kind of, Thanks, kind of, kind of wrap up. Uh, this has been about uh, searching for your higher power. 
And, you know, when it comes to this, just take it easy on yourself. Be kind to yourself. It's okay to take a little bit of time. Like Stacy had said, we come to believe. That means it's going to take time. And I don't know about anybody else, but if God would have given me a burning bush at the beginning, I would have just thrown water on it. Mm. I wouldn't even have been able to notice it. So um, thank you, everybody, for being here. This has been Raw Recovery, a Trudging Together podcast. I love you. Peace out. And have a day.